everybody. Welcome to Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen, the podcast where we watch the HBO show Watchmen. I'm Scott. And I'm Sam. And today we are going to be discussing season one, episode four. If you don't like my story, write your own. Welcome to everybody. Uh, I would just uh, want to say a, a brief thank you to everybody who's watching, everybody who subscribed and like. Appreciate it. Love to see more of that if you want to hook us up. Um, where else, Sam, can our fair watchers and listeners find us? Our Watchmen watchers. You can find us at Nerdcyclopedia all over social media, Twitter, Facebook, um, Instagram, or your favorite social media outlets. We are there. We are also on all your favorite um, podcast outlets, um, all of Apple um, Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, all your favorite tune in. Ah, you know, we're, we're, we're just all mm -hmm. over the place and everything. Also, make sure that you are leaving us feedback at Watching Watchmen. At Nerdcyclopedia, and if you just want to email us in general, email us in general, you know, as nerds, nerds at nerdcyclopedia.com, and make sure that you do go to our website at nerdcyclopedia.com, and for, uh, mo uh, uh, most of all, make sure that you subscribe in. you know, click yeah. that subscribe button now, mm -hmm. now, do it. Before you think twice, and before you hear anything that's going to make you not want to subscribe, subscribe now, <laughs> and uh, and we'll have that locked down, and we can we can move forward with confidence, and that's really what's exactly. important is for us to move forward with confidence. Uh, <laughs> so so Sam, you know, uh, I, I really do want to talk a lot about the episode. Okay. Um, it's, this thing is is excellent. And it's very dense and very interesting. Yeah. Um, let's just start from the beginning. Let's okay. just jump in. Okay. Because I want to get through a lot of this, and let's it's super dive dense. Dive right in, you know. More chicken scratch, by the way. So we are. <laughs> Ready to move forward. We do things analog here sometimes on Nerd Encyclopedia uh, for Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen. But hey, it is color coded, so I got the right color. <laughs> All right, so this episode opens up, and we've had sort of uh, technological uh, Watchmen pictorial screens, right? The uh, the title screens. Yeah. Uh, this time very, we get very, an egg very, cracking. Very great beginnings so far. You know, title screens for the Watchmen. So so our, we get an egg cracking. Uh huh. And these, there's a lot of this theme. This theme's present throughout the episode. It's this theme of life and birth and beginnings. Right. Yes. And we see it all over the place. Uh, this is the first instance of it. We see, um, you know, we see a man and a couple. Mm -hmm. They're running an egg farm in Oklahoma. Right. In Tulsa. Right. And they, we see them go through a, a regular day. And, mm -hmm. you know, on the Instacast, I said, this reminded me of Breaking Bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On, and, the, on, the, on, the, on the other end of that, I, I yeah. said it reminded me of Laws. So, yeah. um, one thing that, um, you know, that, um, if, if you, for all my lost fans and stuff out there, if mm -hmm. this does not remind you of the beginning of the f second season, first episode where you thought you were seeing a whole different show when mm -hmm. Desmond showed up, you know, and it turned out to be him in the hatch. This is yeah. what this reminded me the way, the way this beginning went. So, you know, I don't know anything about that because <laughs> I didn't watch last. I, I had, you know, I think that show was on in my early 20s and I just had other stuff, you know, hey, idiot things. Better things to do, you know. No, it's not. It was not better. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so uh, we, what's really cool, I just want to just want to kind of go through some of the stuff from this uh, this montage, which is to uh, Islands in the Stream, which is, I think is Dolly Parton and Kenny Loggins. Oh, just, wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, who great, that great is. song, great song, you know, to um, put over top of that, too. It's a great song. It's also the song Michael Scott sings in karaoke in the office. <laughs> For real? Okay. And he does the, he does the Dolly Parton part all high. So, check, you know, really high. <laughs> check that out. See, there's a lot of symbolism in this part. Yeah. So, you know, Katie falls. She breaks her eggs, her yes. broken eggs. Uh-huh. Uh, was it her husband, John? I, I can't think it's John. He picks up the egg and kind of mm -hmm. winks at her like oh, oh we saved one of these broken eggs we got right, an egg right uh the the abrupt ending mm -hmm. of this montage as they're going to sleep and an improbable well, 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 well back back yeah. up a little bit so so we got them um you know breaking the egg well uh, the the egg rolling over to john yeah. um then we also get them doing their daily routines like or night routines and everything getting ready for bed so we got them um you know putting a puzzle together you mm -hmm. know we got them you know brushing their teeth and everything just your average you know couple just doing like you know their nightly stuff and a then, close couple a clo yeah a close couple Great. yeah yeah doing a puzzle together you know they do it doesn't seem like they're really watching tv or anything a lot they're really more country more out there outdoorsy type and everything you yeah. know, they're they're not watching. <laughs> Watch what we are. They wouldn't be watching these things. They have better things to do with their time, Sam. Yeah, 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 yeah. More more important things. And, and then, uh, like you said, that um, you know, they they go to bed, and yeah. then you know, the music continues to play. All of a sudden, bam! That, 
that doorbell ring, by the way, made my mm-hmm. dogs go nuts. Really? It was like, you know, wow. Yeah. For okay. those of you that don't know, I have a I have a Dalmatian, I have a and I have a a, a, a pit bull breed mix. <laughs> and when that thing went off last night, you know, the, they went they went crazy. Really? And, and to show okay. you that dogs aren't that smart, when it went off again today, they went crazy. So you know, <laughs> love them, but you know they're not not great about hearing doorbells on TV. Anything else, you know, could be someone you know I'm coming in to murder the whole family, and they don't care. But a doorbell, uh, oh, you know, he, yeah. he's over there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the 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 Katie I think is the is the uh, the wife the woman's name here. Okay. Uh, the book she's reading is Fog Dancing, which is not ah. a book I'm familiar with, but uh, it'll probably you know we'll have to look into that maybe later for okay. our tin foil edition if we decide to do that this week. Yeah, yeah. So, Damon, Damon Lindelof loves books and you know yeah. actually you know putting books in his shows and you know actually having those reference themes just throughout like the episode. So I'm sure that means something you know within the context of the episode. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, who's interrupting them, Sam? Who's interrupting their their supposed new slumber? Lady True! Lady True, who has been... Lady so- True! Someone who we have saw her daughter, uh, episode two. Okay. Buying some newspapers. Yep. And we get a little explanation here <laughs> as far as who she is by way of her conversation, um, which is, uh, you know... Much more, she says uh, that the Millennium Clock is much more than a clock. She's a trillionaire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she, she, yeah, yeah. She makes sure that she corrects them. I'm not a billionaire. I'm a trillionaire and everything. A trillionaire. I mean, besides, what can a trillionaire do? I, I can't even imagine what a trillionaire could do to not. I, 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 I guess they. They have to do something in order not to be bored because you have so much money that you don't know anything, you know, what to do with. So you have to create mischief somehow because you're just that enriched. <laughs> yeah, the, the profit motive, I mean, has to exist for, for Lady True because she had to accumulate the wealth, which she says right. she does from uh, advanced mm-hmm. pharma and genetic research. Uh-huh. Um, she essentially tells them that you're the most important people in the world for three minutes. <laughs> and I want to buy your house and I want to buy your land. Mm-hmm. So she flips this hourglass. This is such an ominous scene, Sam. This okay. is so ominous. And I'm going to say this, that the next thing she does is she explains that legacies aren't money. Legacies aren't things. Legacy is blood. Mm-hmm. And then says, oh, yeah, I own so much stuff. I actually own the fertility clinic you went to. And I was able to genetically engineer your offspring. And here it is. Here's a baby. Which again, let's come down mm-hmm. and be firmly pro baby. <laughs> yeah, we are we are pro baby this episode. You know, <laughs> so we were talking we're, about a little in on the instant yeah. cat in, on the instant talk and everything, but we want to make sure that you guys know we are definitely pro fetus. <laughs> yes, we're, we're we want the we want this particular baby to be fine. Uh, insert this show inserting this baby into this scene, uh-huh. which is you know one very presumptuous of Lady True. <laughs> very you know very presumptuous, you know. Very presumptuous. I mean, in, in fact, you know, she the mom just had like hesitations, yeah. and it's it's the the way the dad, you know, the way John just like you know leapt at the you know, so you could tell one I guess wanted it as much as the other. But one, one, one expressed it more than the other. The mom, you know, she had reservations and everything because um, she is really she, like she could not believe it was not, you know, she couldn't believe it was true. You know, but I think the, that, that is probably mm-hmm. something to I, I think that that she has resigned herself to childlessness. And, and yeah. that's not an easy thing. I, I don't think that's an easy thing to do. Uh-huh. Uh, this this situation has opened that up. But she is careful about this because I think. Right. I, it seems to me that that the impact of finding out you could not have a child was much more devastating for right. Katie than it was right. for John. And, and yeah. that she's just not believing. She doesn't believe it. John John has hope on his side, and she does not. You know, mm-hmm. she she like you say she resigned. You know, to to just you know being without and everything. John still held out hope. So when that hope is put in front of his face, you know, an actual like you know um, physical embodiment of that. You know, Would you like to hold the at, hope? Yeah. Oh, yes. Would you like yes. to hold it? Yeah, yeah. He jumps at the chance and everything. You know, and then we'll see later on in the scene where she, you know, um, um, True puts the pressure yeah. on both of them, and while he's holding, she doesn't want to let go of that, so she has to, you know, mm-hmm. sign the um, you know, sign the papers over. But it's I just, want you to hold the baby. That that I will destroy the baby. Oh man, <laughs> you that was hilarious. The house. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's yeah. a in history. In history, there's a there's a 
a Roman figure named Marcus Crassus. He was a contemporary of Julius Caesar's. Uh-huh. And what he would do, the way he made all his money, is you know houses would catch on fire a lot in ancient Rome because they had lot, lots of fires. <laughs> and they were all smashed together in this city that was not designed with reasonably or, or a purpose. Uh-huh. And what, what he would do is he would bring a fire brigade to the house and he would say, sell me that house. And all the, the whole fire brigade would sit around and then he'd drop his offer. Like uh, he'd be like, all right, you know, a thousand sesterces, 900 sesterces, 800 sesterces. And then when you sold, he put the fire out. And he would do the same to neighboring neighboring houses too. So he ended up with all this real estate. Oh man! Because he was he put this urgency, this now, 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 right? Right, right. right. And that's what a fire does. Uh, Lady True does that here, and and she uses the one thing that these people want that she can provide that they can't get. Mm-hmm. Uh, although also, and, and and this is probably an important thing to say, five million dollars. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, it, it, it take care of all your relocation needs and everything, and all yeah. your child care or whatever that you may want to you know have and everything. You just got to give up this land. Five million dollars. That that sounds like a would you rather, right? Would you rather <laughs> get five million dollars to sell your house, but you also get a baby <laughs> that you've wanted for a long time, <laughs> wanted for know, a long time. For knows pretty much it, you guys' whole marriage. Who knows know. where it came from? You know. Who uh, knows, man? That's that's something I wanted. To, I want to also discuss because that that statement where he came from is something that Will says to Angela. You know, I want you to know where you came from. Right. So it's an echo, and as we know from. Later in the show, what we'll get to is that these people are in cahoots, Sam. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, to to sort of sort of put credibility to that scene, you know, um, John makes a point that he recognizes Lady True. Yeah. So he he recognizes Lady True. So it puts sort of like credibility. If you see somebody famous, you know somebody on TV, you know, as for whatever reason, it lends the credibility to whatever's coming out of their mouth, even if it's a lie or whatever. You know, she could say this baby came from, you know, uh, she says his baby comes from their, you know, their um, um, DNA and everything. So I might as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because might as well. what would the point be of cheating these people here? Yeah. Yeah. Versus I, I, some, versus someone who they didn't know coming up to the um to their <laughs> to yeah. their house selling the same story and everything. Same exact story, but not them not actually know who this person is. So mm-hmm. it brings a whole level of credibility to the. And she's to got the money. Scene. Yes. She obviously they the already money. know that she does. Yeah. That cat, that check is gonna cash. It's gonna go. Through, it's gonna clear. It's gonna be fine. So they believe everything. The, the 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 dad, you know, John, he believes everything that's coming out of her mouth. You know, regardless and everything, he's ready to accept hope. This baby. <laughs> so so far, I mean, just just looking at symbols so far, birth. I mean, the baby obviously. Uh-huh. We have Tree's daughter uh, who makes an appearance here. Yes. Uh, we have all the eggs. Mm-hmm. Um, the mention of the fertility clinic. So lots of birthing, birth and life and, you know, uh, beginnings right. themes here. Right. Uh, so I want to talk about what Lady True's real deal is a little bit because, okay. you know, enhanced, it seems like maybe the product that she's, that made her a trillionaire is more life. Like it's, it's what that, you know, what they want in uh, Blade Runner, right? I want yeah, more right. life. Right. Right. So she's, she's extending people's lives and extending their legacies through cloning and through advanced pharma. But there's something I want that, that's really interesting here, mm-hmm. and it's a question. It's an open question after the episode. So, the deal with this scene is Lady True is buying this house because as soon as as soon as the deal is consummated, a meteor smashes into this. I property. mean, it's just amazing how time and you know <laughs> that just all coincides, right? It is. It is. And I, I want to point we, out did, did we mention also that she had that um you know the hourglass you know yes. sand. Okay. The hourglass, the ominous black yeah. sand hourglass. Right, right. right. And you Which only would, have three minutes. Well, I have three minutes. So here's 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 some pros, some cons. Here's some devil's advocate stuff. Mm-hmm. So Lady True has to have foreknowledge of this incident for any of this to make sense. That's it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's necessary because yeah, yeah. she has knows the exact people, mm-hmm. knows the exact leverage, mm-hmm. has time to gestate and bring out a, a genetic, you know, mixing of their genetics or whatever she does here. Right. I'll just wave my hand and say her, true magic. Because <laughs> why not? I like it. Yeah. Uh, so this is a plan that obviously wasn't, you know, 15 minutes ago, 20 minutes right. ago. Right. She wasn't just driving around with a baby being like, ah, one of these people. Right. You know, live, you know, we'll figure it out. But mm-hmm. uh, so she had to know in advance. Now, mm-hmm. there's two ways that I can see this being possible. Number one is that she can see through time. Because she has some sort of special psychic ability that allows her to do this, uh, it's a superhero comic book, you know, show. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't be out of line, right? It would make some sense. Well, the, uh, 
Okay. But there's another one, right? So that's that's mm-hmm. number one. Okay. Number two is, I mean, it's an astronomical event. Right. So right now for us, we would be hard pressed to figure out where something's going to hit with that sort of specificity. Right. When you hear, you know, when you hear like like Skylab fell, it was the I think the figure was Australia mm-hmm. or something like that. Mm-hmm. I think that it's also possible that she didn't have foreknowledge, but was able to work out very far in advance mm-hmm. when this was going, where this was going to take place through means that would be accessible to you or I, right? With infeasibility. Right. I mean, I'm not going to spend sort of money. Yeah, it would take. Yeah. I mean that. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's, it's grounded in a way where it'll be very feasible in this universe without it actually having to, you know, you uh, show us like special effects, superpowers and everything like her energies coming out of her mind and everything. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, Phoenix or whatever, <laughs> yeah. you know, dropping stuff and, X-Men right and everything and everything um, like Professor Xavier and stuff. So this is in a realm. This is in the um, in universe, you know, absolutely. As, as so it's possible. So that's our question. I, I think that's our question of the week, Sam. I think that's what I want to put up as our question of the week here. And that is, do you believe that Lady True has some sort of supernatural ability or do you believe that she simply is using some sort of specific scientific prowess to do this? Mm-hmm. That's our question. So and if you have a third option or another option, you want to throw that at us. We'll listen. We might not give it a lot of credibility, but we'll listen. Uh, so we'll definitely well, take those. We, uh, well, we also see, um, you know, as the episode goes along, she's sort of anag- uh, you know, analogous, as, as, mm-hmm. as they would say, to like the world's smartest man and everything. So, yes. you know, her um, and her buying, you know, Vite's um, company and everything sort of, um, you know, puts us in that and puts us on that road, sort of on that trail and everything that they're those breadcrumbs that they're leading, um, they're putting down for us. So she has swallowed Adrian's company and mm-hmm. Adrian's company was perceived, you know, it was portrayed as enormous. It was portrayed as like, you know, he he was a peer with like um, Dodge and, you know, GMC and stuff. So yeah, like Ford for, and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So for her to swallow that up is no small undertaking for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, absolutely not. So is that, do you have anything else to say about this really creepy opening scene where she says that is mine about the. Well, uh, OK. Meteor? So 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 here's the thing that, you know, if, if you're really thinking about it. You know, we find out also that their last names are Clark. Yeah. Okay. So right. <laughs> we got the um, we we got the whole you know, <laughs> the whole the whole um meteor coming to, to you know landing in the in the middle of the field and everything. You know, them giving a baby and stuff. You know, to the um to the you know Lady True getting baby. It sort of has that hints of you know Krypton Supermanish. You know, just a maybe there's a nod towards that. You're right. You know, I hadn't even considered. I hadn't considered that, Sam. That's an excellent, excellent poll. So the Clarks, not the Kents. The Clarks <laughs> were about to have a meteor crash into their farm, mm-hmm. and now they're given a different baby. It, it, different you're right. It's an baby. excellent, yeah. yeah, excellent deconstruction. And this isn't the first Superman origin esque, you know, right. scene that we've seen. It's interesting that this parallels with Will Reeves' own origin story mm-hmm. seen in Episode One, mm-hmm. where. Uh, as you said, the Superman origin story. Right, right. And remember, Will is also given a baby. I guess that's important for these. You got to be given a baby in Watchmen. Yeah. And also, Angela was given very, some babies. Very, very anyway, anyway, to pay attention to that. A lot of babies. Yeah. A lot of baby like, shuffling. A lot of babies being given and taken away, <laughs> and maybe you know, grow, growing in pots and stuff. <laughs> Which once again, we're we're in favor of the babies growing in pots. So we're here to speak for the pod babies. Uh, <laughs> or pod babies. <laughs> All right, so so that so we'll, we'll we'll catch back up with Lady okay. True. There'll be more okay. to talk about about her later. Right. I have some, mm-hmm. you know, we don't want to, you know, eat up the I whole. Lo- I, I love the setup of her daughter being in that first episode mm-hmm. and her, you know, giving this call, this this, you know, just just the way this set up and the tease and everything. Who is she getting those newspapers for? Why does she need all these new newspapers and everything? And do we really know the answer to that specific question yet? She reads them. That's oh. all we know. So we don't know what okay. she's doing with them or, or okay. what the deal is there. Okay. Uh, unanswered so far but we know that that's the daughter that's her daughter so that's her daughter yep. bn which is b-i-a-n i'll just uh <laughs> i backed it up and looked guys i do that sometimes there we go okay so so we move on to another montage which is another and, and this is another sort of breaking badass thing they do a montage of getting ready to go to the cook do a montage for the cook do a mm-hmm. montage of getting away from the cook and everyone would say it's the best show on television and they were right mm-hmm. so you know it's a good tactic uh so Angela destroys. She's doing break, real Breaking Bad stuff, right? Like this is stuff <laughs> Walt was doing. Uh, she's destroying evidence, which you know, this cutting up of the thing reminds me a lot of that kid's bike in, uh, right? You know, the Todd, 
uh, Todd scene Aaron, and um, the Todd the Todd scene. If you haven't seen it, we're not going to go into when and where. Do yeah, we? yeah, yeah. It was very, check it out. Very, very tragic. Anyway, so um, very big. And again, Breaking Bad esque, and, the, and these are excellent. Um, you know, we get a real we have a real light motif, and I know I said that there was sort of a, a thematic light motif where when they wanted to call back to the '80s, they would use sort of like a synthesizer '80s esque sound. Uh huh. But I, you know, Angela has her own sort of you know doing stuff theme right right the, right yeah the badass yeah. montage theme of this show which yeah. uh you know to call out the music here ex- explicitly is excellent and 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 it's a little camp too so we get her you know shots of her putting on her boots you know putting on her makeup and everything putting on her suit and everything you know sort of a batman-ish or superhero-ish campness you know the scene is a campy but it's a campness to it because throughout any parts of the other episode nobody else is doing that we right. but we just see angela doing that <laughs> right, we see Angela doing this only, and this time it's you know she's totally destroying the wheelchair and cleaning her, you know, scrubbing everything clean. As she does, she gets a call from the uh, the Greenwood Center, and it says that Will has a new piece of his family tree that's available. Uh-huh. This, of course, is interesting to Angela. That is her family tree. Mm-hmm. So Angela calls in her own break in of the of the Greenwood Center here and just it breaks the window, right? uh as badass right that's i think this is a scene from the uh from the trailer where she smashes the window in. yeah yeah goes hey if you hear anything it's me <laughs> <laughs> uh she talks to you know the second appearance by treasury uh treasury secretary secretary henry lewis gates jr um and uh i think he's i believe he's the prof- he's the professor from that beer summit right uh in addition to his other accomplishments i believe that's a, that's okay. his yeah, notoriety i believe so okay and certainly other other uh, you know he's an August uh, learned person so it's right. not to dice him but that's just a if you have heard the name that's probably where you heard it from if you're not someone that knows his work right uh, so Angela he says I'm gonna encode your acorn right which feels like a euphemism for a flash drive right that's what I was thinking <laughs> and it comes out it's literally an acorn it's literally an acorn literally an acorn mm-hmm. and it made me think about all you know the Luddite society. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a society of people that have rejected computation. So, if you were, you know, an eighty year old person who didn't, you know, because computers weren't ubiquitous in this world, right? You w- wanted to explain to this to a person, this is what you do with this thing, and this is how it works without having to tell them. Right. An acorn is actually a pretty good visualization. Right. Um, because you plant it, uh, it's how oh, the trees grow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not an arborist guy. Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> But a little, then a little tree pops up. Her literal family tree, right? Which is, 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 and it's this, this holographic display. It's this technology they have that we really don't have. And we find that Angela has a new hit on her family tree, mm-hmm. and we see a picture of Will, an archival picture of Will Reeves, who, uh, and she says, "Leave me the fuck alone." Right, right, right. <laughs> Well, she we also we also see you know her granddad. We see we yeah. basically see um you know her grandparents from the first episode, very first yeah. scene and everything. So we get the um you know tie in and everything about her you know family heritage and stuff right there in the um in that particular scene. That was actually really nice to see. I love the way that they tie back everything. Mm-hmm. I, I love the way that they in, in their in their in their creative boardroom or you know um 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 whatever you know you call it as far as their board and everything they must have a lot of string you know Mm -hmm. tied to different events and stuff that happens in a particular episode and make sure everything is like tied in together you know just like one little detail they put the string like to this you know particular detail if we're going to introduce you know the um you know the daughter in one scene she's going to be in the um you know we let's let's make the string go to the fourth episode where we're going to introduce her mom and her um you know the um um you know the whole organization and stuff the um events that happened in you know the Tulsa you know that actually affects um, we, we don't, we don't know in that first episode that they're, um, relatives of Angela, but that's going to tie in by the time we get to the fourth ep- you know, fourth, the fourth episode, um, that we're going to see, you know, Angela meet her, her grandparents and everything. And, um, little, know a little bit more about, um, Will, um, Will Reeves. Absolutely. And, you know, we get some of that information here. Uh, it's information that's confirmed, uh, OB Williams being the war, uh, you know, the war veteran that we saw previously right. so good confirmation they're giving us all that information lining it all up as one sort of generational story that we're seeing here 
Uh, out of nowhere, uh, there's an enormous crash, <laughs> and we cut. Angela runs to the to the uh, the like the main downtown drag here and mm-hmm. finds Lori Blake laughing hysterically at, in front of a car that has been dropped uh, in her lap almost. Yeah. And it, it is Angela's car. Ah, yeah. Very, uh, from what we've seen, like, the, what, a couple episodes ago? Yeah, Angela's car, which was taken away with Will Reeves in it. Right. The end mm-hmm. of episode two has been deposited back. Mm-hmm. And Will's pills are in the glove box. Uh, Lori has this great line at the end here where she's like, uh, they take anything? And then she says, ah, cool costume and leaves. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> It's so diminutive. It's a, she just has this way of just being like, a, like just cutting cutting people down is so great. I mean, that's, so great. And, and 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 we know you know how she was. It's just like I said before. It's a great way of developing this character, Lori. You know, um, um, just 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 Fizik. How do you how do you pronounce her last name? Uh, it is just Pezik. Just Pezik. Just just Pezik. You know, um, because that was in the Pedia fires for this week. Okay. Uh, just to bring that in now, her the pronunciation, the name's in there, uh-huh. and uh, it's in her. There's a redacted interview of her being picked up after oh, she, man. well, the Oklahoma City bombing. Super cool yeah, detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some other details that we'll leave. I'll let you. I'll let you read. And then the, uh, and then we get some of the. Um, we get a a schematic for some of Dan Dryberg's tech. So right. that's pretty awesome too. Right. Uh, so cool, cool. So check out the Pedia files. They're pretty neat. Little yeah. extra, little background here, but they did get Timothy McVeigh. So, and hey, <laughs> if there's anyone that we can agree, uh, you know, needs should have been gotten. Timothy McVeigh's on that list, uh, right? Pretty, so pretty, good, pretty, good pretty on much, him. You know, Dan, good and, um, Dan and Lori, they, you know, they did their job as far. We'll, we'll touch on that a little bit later too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that. but yeah, so so Lori, you know, we see we see the development of her character, you know, through you know Gene Smart acting out her, um. You know, acting out this particular character and her cynicism, you know, comes across. It's like sort of like spitting venom and everything. Mm-hmm. Any every line that comes out of her mouth is sort of like a, you know, just like a, um, okay, you know, I'm not impressed by. She's not impressed by anything that goes on around here. Yeah. After after um you know uh, uh, after witnessing a squid drop <laughs> <laughs> in New York, you know, yeah. she's well, she saw much, the aftermath too. So Lori. And, and and for those of you that aren't book readers, mm-hmm. Lori here is Dr. Manhattan took Lori to New York after the squid. So she saw Ground Zero. After then, coming from Mars. After by coming the from way. coming from Mars, yes. Uh, but yeah, she was on Mars. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Manhattan can do a lot of stuff. <laughs> so she was in down she was uh, at ground zero of the squid drop and was then at Karnak as well. So she's the only human that saw both of those things. Right. So that's a that's an interesting point for her. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Lori go. You know, Angela goes home, and Cal's asleep with the girls. So she goes to Topher's room. And I got a question. You know, is Topher a psychic? <laughs> I, I've got some questions about if he's if he's psychic sensitive as well, because you know he's building that Ozymandias prison with the the connects or yeah. constructs or whatever right. those are, mm-hmm. and. He also heard the shots, so he knew to get away from the Seventh Cavalry attack. Okay. There's just some evidence of that. Okay. Again, open question. Certainly, yeah. he could simply be an empathetic person, which you know I wouldn't know what that's like, but I hear it's not. <laughs> uh, but you know, it, so there's another. So this is another ambiguity, right? And, and and we've talked on this show before about there's a subtext to everything going on in the show, and they keep proving conspiracy theorists right. So the thing that's presented to us about Topher is that he's a sensitive kid and he's nice and he's, you know, understands what the world is, but he's he's traumatized. Right. But the subtext to this is the conspiracy theory way to read this would be that Topher is a psychic. Okay. And again, conspiracy theories keep being proven true. Right. In the show. Right. So a lot of a lot of open questions there uh, about Topher. But Angela catches Cal up the next morning. We cut to the next morning. She catches Cal up. And the girls ask Cal what happened to Uncle Judd. And Cal Cal says... Cal jumps in there pretty immediate. You know, he wants to clearly define what he believes, you know, on and and, and put that on his kids. And, And Angela turns around 
she 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 should know her she knows her husband you know mm -hmm. she knows that he's you know has his beliefs and everything but she wants to see how he actually put this towards them because in um you know with children you with children you want to have you want to you don't want to lie to them mm -hmm. but you also want to keep their sense of wonderment you know mm -hmm. want to keep their sense of you know um you know, uh, of hope or whatever that you 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 want to have, you want to still have to make the kids still be a kid and everything. Like you know, right. Scott was saying, we still love babies. <laughs> we still Let love them be kids. Babies. We're cool with that. Yeah, we we love the kids here. But um, Cal jumps in here pretty immediately and defines what the conver how the conversation is going to go by telling them that he's gone nowhere. He says he says heaven is pretend. Heaven is pretend pretend and he says well before he was born he was nowhere and he says he grew up and lived his life now he's nowhere again think who about, wants waffles yeah. <laughs> think about how deep that is because i don't know what what um how old they were when their parents you know um you know was with the um what happened with the white knight and everything but they've been with them for a while now but the older one topher or uh, is Topher Topher's the oldest one, right? Yeah. Okay. So Topher, um, I, I I I can't I can't say that they were taught like anything you know with their parents or what you know religious background that they may have had and everything, but for Cal to come in there and so clearly define to them you know what um, life and death is and what the afterlife you know before life and everything um, is pretty just stark. It was pretty. It, it, I, I was taken aback a little bit by his his bluntness about it. He didn't I sugarcoat think, it. He did not. And I, I uh, hand up. I, I think this is this is a reflection of the the life of communism. That communism is more mm -hmm. prevalent in uh -huh. this world than it is in ours because the Soviet Union doesn't seem to have fallen. Uh, it's this isn't this is a reminder of that for me because Cal and Angela are from Vietnam and Vietnam, you know, was a hotbed of communist activity. Obviously, in our in our universe, right? Snuffed out by Doctor Manhattan and the comedian, um, but. You know, it seems like there's this this ingrained atheism and this militant atheism is a communist feature. It's right. something the communists do that, that our country really didn't do. And that being so abrupt and there, mm -hmm. it, it, seem, it seems like it's it's a little dissonant from <laughs> our view, right? Right, 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 right. But the kids don't seem to be that messed up about it. No. And everyone just kind of accepts this as a as a very valid philosophical viewpoint for them. Well, if you think about a kid's perspective, they'll pretty much take anything. And most most kids, I should say, I'm not saying all kids. Most kids <laughs> will take what a denault say as gospel, you know, right. unless until they're grown up to the point where they're proven wrong by their experience and everything. A kid, you know, at the age that they are, maybe six or seven or whatever, will ask a whole bunch of questions. You know, I got kids myself and everything, so I know this, you know, firsthand. So they'll ask a whole bunch of questions and they'll pretty much accept whatever answer that you give them. You know, they'll get other answers to their questions from other folks, but they'll always come back to their parents, you know, to ask these questions. And their parents, as we were all kids one time, our parents are the gospel. You know, mm -hmm. they're the end-all, be-all as far as, like, the um, answers that we're given until we go uh, grow up and have to pay bills and mm -hmm. have to, um, you know, pay taxes, have to go to school, you know, do all these other things, get jobs and stuff to fill our minds and get all the nuances and stuff about life that kids don't have to really deal with. <laughs> I don't want to do any of those things. I'm just, just playing it. So it's depressing. It is depressing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it makes you want to go back to, like you said, you know, slump down and be a kid again and everything. Man, it sounds, like, sure. sounds like the, 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 the good old days, you know. Mr. Sam, what happened to oh, Uncle Judd? Man. Mr. You know. Sam? All right. All right. Enough of that. Play. <laughs> there's a cool there's a cool tra there's a cool uh, transition mm -hmm. between the waffle maker and the fence, uh, the fence latch. That's really yeah. Cool. Yeah. I like that. I like that. I like that. That's another Breaking Badass thing. I'm going to just tally him up because I, and, and, and hey, if you're going to be you, you, you haven't seen Lost. It's a mm -hmm. Lost thing as well. So, OK, they, they, they work in conjunction and, you know, the but the difference between what what Damon does and what Vince Gilligan does is that Vince is more. While, while he loves, like, the montages and, like, the transitions and everything, his was a little bit more dirtier, yeah. you know. 
his is a bit more grimier and you know more dirty and more more uh, stark than than what Damon does with his. But they're on the same like wavelength. I, I feel like somebody who's like oh, the Beatles did this, the Beatles did this, and you're someone who's like Chuck Berry did this, and it's yeah, like you know yeah, what I mean, like yeah, Robert yeah, Johnson did yeah, this, you know yeah, what I mean? It's like yeah. I gotta defend my guy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like well, actually, they were influenced, and uh, I like uh, I think that's funny because I believe because I, I know that's true, and I know Lost is also a, is a big influence on Breaking Bad, so it's interesting to see those sort of through lines uh, you see there. Uh, the Sopranos well, actually, also do something too. So 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 I'm about to go at it again. So, Get it. This is our was show. A, this um, is our show, Sam. You can talk about anything you want. This was a um, writer on X Files. Oh, okay. Which was a direct influence on um, Lost. You know, <laughs> which was an influence on Breaking Bad and everything. So, you know, you can you can find wherever you know influences come. But you know, this used to do a lot of stuff on X Files that was really weird and crazy and stuff. <laughs> you know, so um, it, it it all falls in line the way that you know creative you know creative. But both shows they are very. Very creative in their display of you know, information and everything, you mm-hmm. know, and how they present scenes towards you know to the to the audience. And we're like we're like like we said, I'm a little bit of a literature snob. I like that stuff. I like the I like the flourish. I like yeah. the little. If you can if you can give me one line that crosses a T and dots an I, I'm on board for that. Awesome. It's for sure. I like elegance. All right, so so on to the Looking Glass. Looking Glass and his lair, which is in just a. a a, a, a apocalypse bunker that everyone just assumes that a guy like Wade would have an apocalypse bunker, so it's not a big deal, right? That's that's my read on I, that. I, I, I love the fact that we know knew really nothing about this guy, and now we're finding out we're we're finding like little tidbits of his his paranoia, mm-hmm. his um you know idiosyncrasies and everything. You know he has this thing about squids, man, and and it makes so much sense too. You know mm-hmm. um. And I, and I hope this world, if it goes beyond this season, shows other parts of the country, maybe even the world, now how the 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 DIE <laughs> and, you know, of course, costume adventuring affected the world, you know? Mm-hmm. And it makes sense on, you know, what we're about to see. Absolutely. So so Looking Glass has is, is got this Lenny, Lenny from The Simpsons lifestyle. I think I, I think I said that a couple episodes ago, uh, where he, like, his, his stripped-down lifestyle is very basic. Um, he says, sorry, he he was at, there was a squid fall. Like you said, it wasn't a long one. He took a bunch of pictures of the squids. He says, this is a great line. I spent 30 seconds of life and I spent it all dying, which is such a great, it's such a great line. It's such a great delivery, delivery there. Um, this prompts Angela to call him weird. Well, he also cites that, um, that they were from a, or he thinks they're from another dimension, right? Right. Yeah, he does. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So he knows they're interdimensional. They call each other weird, which it seems like an, a word, you know, a little club word for them. Right. Uh, and, you know, Angela says, well, Judd was a racist. But there's this, uh, he was a white man in Oklahoma line, yeah, which I'm is. Wh- he was a white man in Oklahoma. <laughs> was, like, <laughs> and then Angela pulls out the clan, the clan outfit yeah, with the, the, with the badge. Angela. Well, you know, he had a clan outfit in the closet, right? Huh? You know? <laughs> That's a pretty. He's like, uh. Well, pull, sounds pull like out. you know. Well, hold up. What was his line? He was like, well, "Sounds like it was." You know, it, it's time. We for have a ourselves reckoning. a reckoning. <laughs> we have ourselves a reckoning. We have ourselves a reckoning. <laughs> and they refer to Lori as the FBI lady, and uh, Looking Glass says she's extremely weird. Which, uh, as an in, an in joke, we know. Yes, she's weird the same yeah, way yeah, LG yeah. and Sister Night are. She's oh, weird yeah. like them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just want to say, Tim Blake Nelson. He's a hell of an mm-hmm. actor. I remember him in Incredible Hulk. You know the um, you know the 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 Mar- the Marvel Studios, the second Marvel Studios movie after Iron Man and everything. He played the um, the who will become the leader. You know the scientist and everything, and just see him and and he's had many other roles since then. But um, that's the one I remember him from, and to see him just really just knock this role out. You know, it's it's it's, it's wonderful to see. It does doing a great job. About a Buster Scruggs, another good uh, <laughs> good uh, movie to check out if you mm-hmm. like. The Coen Brothers, and you like this show, you probably like that. So the next scene is Angela suits up, like you said, mm-hmm. the campy Batman esque getting ready montage that we like. I love to see just because it says all the things about what she's doing to protect, you know, arm herself. Right. And she destroys this this evidence by throwing the evidence into a garbage truck that's automated, that's bound for the incinerator. Mm-hmm. And she turns around. Uh oh. Uh oh. And there's a guy, and I'm just going to... He's in a green man suit, except it's silver. <laughs> and he's either wearing a mask or he's got his face painted to look like a face. He's tall. 
he's thin <laughs> and he's wearing like hot dog uh, condiment dispensers full of water or whatever. It looks bizarre, right? I mean, if you can't tell me something, you know, this, this show is like super weird. So not only do you, okay, you, you're already used to Angela, you know, out on the streets in the daytime. And, yeah. and that was, as, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm used to her. I, well, I, I guess I'm just used to my, you know, um, um, black cape, dark superheroes being, you know, uh, adventurers of the night and everything. She's out in broad daylight with her. Well, what's you know, she running for? Night. Well, I, Who's yeah. coming for her? Yeah, yeah, the yeah, cops? exactly every day, all right? Because she's a dispatch. She doesn't even know where she is. <laughs> <laughs> she's Detective Doc uh, Sister Knight. Yeah, and she's, then, she's way more tied in than Batman even was in the 66 uh, series. Yeah, like, pretty, it's another level beyond that. Pretty, pretty, pretty much. So we turn around. She turns around and sees this guy in a silver outfit just staring she, at her. She never the, seen this. What? It's very obvious she's not familiar with this guy. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I, I'm just like her because her favorite line is, what the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Angela, we're just as surprised as you out of all this. This is some crazy weirdness. It's legit weird. It's legit weird. So that what ha- so that what this guy what this guy does or, or gal I don't even whatever. Yeah. I'm gonna just call him Silver Man just because I gotta call him something. Well, the silver well, Bullet. Well, well, hold, silver on, bullet. Hold, on, hold on, hold on. We already got a name for him because in the very next scene we'll see what you know Red Scare names him. Really? Lube Man. Oh, the Lube Man. <laughs> lube Man. That, 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 that's what called on the social media and everything. You know, that's Lube worst, Guy. Worst, you know, lube man worst Mega Man Robot Master. Oh, lube. man. So 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 the guy, you know, she she chases after him, you know, um, running through, like, you know, a, a junkyard or whatever, you know. Um, and and before, the, you know, she, she tries to, you know, catches him, he – Water and everything, you know, so just squirts itself with water and then um, lies right down and slides in a sewer. So creepy. What kind of weird shit is that? That is some crazy stuff, Scott. That's, He's just that's like some... Jared. He, he, it's just like what you would imagine, like Jared from Silicon Valley. You know, Zach Woods, you know that guy? He's yeah, always talking about, right. like, my body. Oh, my body's like skeletons tied together with fishing line or whatever. <laughs> that's that's what it, that's the type of thing. He's like, oh, I can do that. You know, it's like that type of guy. Great uh, show, by the way. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. It's, uh, it's the final season. It's doing great work. Yep. Uh, crazy, crazy, though, you know. I just say, like, how random is that? That's how random. Random, is that? random, 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 you what? know. <laughs> but she's actually able to get the belt that he took off. And, um, Why leave the belt? That's a question. So the belt's not gonna fit. You can't hold it. I, that's weird. That's a weird thing that he well, left I, the belt. I, oh, okay, if he knew he, that he was gonna slide in the sewer and everything, I'm, I'm guessing the belt was gonna be in his way. I, I suppose, but you figure he, uh, it's weird that he dropped it. It's a weird thing. It seemed optional to me. Not that he couldn't have to take it off or whatever, but right. you, you can just hold the damn thing. Eh, eh. Doing it like this. This is a hot dog impression, also. <laughs> All right. So 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 we we um all right you know go to the next scene and then right. um so um, uh, Lori has this conversation with Red Scare and some of the other cops about what the have you ever seen this like this is bizarre right right uh, right Red Scare names him Lube Man as you said Lube Man yep yep <laughs> and says all the and refers to Lori as the boss lady uh, <laughs> and she's in Judd's office just chilling chilling reading the file yeah. just biding her time waiting for angela to come on in and say hi right <laughs> just wait for her specifically this is also is this where senator keen she bumps into senator keen right here right uh before yes yes so right you know as soon as right she here. gets into the um before she talks talking to red scare she bumps into senator keen senator there's something weird about senator keen oh yeah he's just a there's smiling he's a smiling pack of weirdness you know, there's some unsettling about oh, yeah, him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Sure. You know, so that that's a weird. I know weird. who you are, Angela. That's oh, we're weird. Not, we're not supposed to. We're not supposed to say that, huh? Oh, you don't. Oh, I know your name. Like, what would the point be of selling us to be doing that? That is so, not supposed to be threatening. So, what's up with the Secret Service people or whatever? So he asks them to step aside and everything, as if he's about to have a private conversation with with um Angela. They take two steps. <laughs> you know. As if, you know, whatever he's about to say, they're not going to overhear, you know. I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, that's you one know. of those TV things, right? Like, Yeah, yeah. It's like, you're uh, in the same know. room. It's, nobody else is there. Uh, you yeah, would hear that. You know, you know, just this TV. So let it be TV and everything. <laughs> and, then, and then, like you said, you know, we, we, we see Angela talking to, um, to Lori, 
you know, in the office, and they get mm-hmm. into a and and Lori and Lori with her, Lori is just wow. She's just so so cynically snide and stuff, and you know, I'm, I'm I know it all, I know everything, and you know, she t- she talks to Angela saying that they got another hit, and the way she says another it, hit on your car, <laughs> I got we got another hit on your car, and then Angela yeah. was like, what the fuck. So we find out also, this is where they said, we dressed it for Pence. We've dressed it for Prince. So Will Reeves is Will's name. Mm-hmm. He was a cop in New York in the 40s and 50s, retired and disappeared. Now, Sam, <laughs> who else was active in the 40s and 50s and suddenly disappeared? Ah, man. Somebody with a hood and a noose. Motor oh, justice. Man, you know, with red so, tights. So. Pajama I, tights. They're they're wanting to cast a little bit. There's a lampshade at that, right? Yeah. At least at some point. So right. he's he's this guy. Right. Uh, we're we're to understand that that's the insinuation. I think uh, if we're not supposed to be losing our minds about it, we are anyway. So whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hundred year olds use wheelchairs. They found wheelchair tracks. There's all this. It, there's like this t- sort of tightening up around of, of Angela, or, or like the walls are sort of closing in on her. Right. Um. It's definitely putting her in jeopardy for sure. And then Petey comes in late. <laughs> Yale Petey <laughs> comes in late. <laughs> I'm surprised that in other shows you probably would have like um <laughs> maybe a little lube and stuff on the side. Yeah, right. <laughs> like what? Oh, sorry guys. Why do you smell bad, Dale? Oh, I was out in the garbage. Oh no, what did Red Scare the same scary do? You say, What is this stuff on this? <laughs> <laughs> you also see Red Scare has both an American and a Soviet flag on his desk. So again, the Soviet Union is I did not notice that. I did not notice that. Great pickup. It's atheism. So Leningrad is mentioned by name. Mm-hmm. Oh, so anyway, mm. uh, the, the hit is obviously something to do with the Millennium Clock. It's right. that these airships are dry, like this. The only thing that's capable of these air cranes. It has to be it because what else could it possibly be? It'd be weird for it to be anything else that close to the thing. Mm-hmm. And on the drive to the clock, you know, uh, Lori says that those those prints and all that stuff being in the car is a thermodynamic miracle, mm-hmm. which is allusion to Dr. Manhattan saying that's something like oxygen turning into gold, and he's never seen it. Right. Never seen it. Right. We also uh, find that Lori has talked to Cal. Mm-hmm. And find that she knows that Cal and, Lo- and Angela met in Vietnam. Right. She says, people in mass high trauma says, were you in a school with nuns? Were you taught by nuns? What's the deal with the nuns? <laughs> she says, I wear a mask to, Angela says, I wear a mask to protect myself. Lori says. Did a, nu- did from- a nun fly through your window, yeah. you know, crash through your window. All of a sudden, you know, you got that inspiration. <laughs> the way that Jean, the way that uh, Jean Smart delivers this line here where she says, uh, from the pain, like that. <laughs> so good. So great. Hey, so, Lori has seen a lot, man. She's seen a lot. <laughs> she was Best raised dude. by a minute, man. I mean. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. To be a fighting machine, you know? Oh, man. You know, yeah. Uh, she asked Petey to say, uh, Angela asked Lori about her trauma, and she's like, Petey, just tell her. Yeah. My uh, fanboy back here in the back, you know, my um, my traveling dog companion or whatever, <laughs> you know, he'll um explain to you, he'll he'll explain to you my story, you know, instead of me doing it and everything, let him do it because he could say it a lot better, you know, he's a lot more knowledgeable, or you know, he has he has a knowledge of my story and everything, and mm-hmm. and and spouts off some really golden stuff right here. He says the Minutemen show is garbage. That that specific term is hilarious. Well, the way uh, he says it, you know, the way he, you know, okay, you know, um, you know, first he starts talking about like the Minutemen and everything, and then um, um, Angela when she, so Petey starts talking about his uh, her dad, uh, Lori's dad was a comedian, and her mom was a silk spe- uh, um, the first silk, silk specter. And at first, uh, I don't know how knowledgeable Angela is about the whole Minutemen thing and everything. She seemed like she half watches the show or what have you. Like TV? Yeah, 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 exactly. But um, as soon as she, as soon as um, Petey mentions Minutemen and everything, you know, she turns around and says, "Oh, like the, that show, the Minutemen on um, on on <laughs> on TV or whatever." And then it, it, that was sort of like stung Petey a bit. You know, he sort of reacts like, "Ah, yeah." You know, no, no. that was, you know, that that was not, uh, you know, it was well, fake news, you know, uh, <laughs> hyper history yeah, and everything. Right, <laughs> right, that, is, that, is, that is not how it happened, you know. <laughs> yeah. 
That's right. Like, I, I, in, in our real world, he starts to explain exactly what happened with um, Lori and um, um, well, Sally and the comedian. At least. Yeah. yeah. He, he very pl- bluntly says, her dad tried to rape her mom like that, which is just very direct. Gets to the point, right? Gets to the and point. That, and that's yeah. something for book readers, obviously, we know that. Yeah. So that's in chapter two mm-hmm. of the book. <laughs> All right. Millennium clock time. So we meet the end true here. Mm-hmm. We find out also that these cranes, um, there's six of them and they can go a hundred kilometers and they absolutely could do the thing they're asking. Did it do, which I we're to understand. This is exactly how this happened, right? I mean, there's no lampshade here, uh, you know, from what we happens later, uh, BN who is refers to lady true as mother says, we'll have tea in the vivarium. Which is yeah. a weird word to use, Vivarium. and is very specific also to Watchmen. Fancy. As Adrian, Adrian Vate uh, had one. Yep. Adrian Vate had. One. Uh, and P- Petey is made to wait in the car a lot, meaning he has a lot of free time all of a sudden. <laughs> oh, Petey. There's some- there's a talk about the Ozymandias poem and statue that we're familiar with as book readers, and uh, just to clear everyone, and it's a poem about the inevitability of decay and time sort of washing over the achievements of everybody eventually. Right. Uh, it's about the folly of man and the inevitability of time. This is also, um, and this is what this is what Petey said, I think. It's what he said, quoting Lady True at the dedication of the clock, mm-hmm. says that, that quote, right? The, uh, Look on my work, see mighty in despair. Okay. Uh, Bien calls this the first wonder of the new world. The new world, and what does it do? It tells time. Wow, what a novel concept. It's I, the that's the wording, because I think that we've seen that more than once. The tell it does more than tell time, right? Tell yeah. time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That word tell, mm-hmm. it means directive, right? Mm-hmm. There's got to be something like that to it. Some sort of manipulation, or some like we said, of, some sort of like you said, manipulation, controlling of time that she was able to, she's somehow able to tap into that we have yet to to really see how, see how that's being played out here. But once you have a universal clock, so I've been thinking about this in my head, all, all right, by my, all by myself up there this time, which yeah, is smart. You go. Let anyone else in. So if you have a knowledge of exactly what time it is everywhere all the time, right? If you have this bedrock always time collaboration then you would always know you'd be able to timestamp where you are in relationship to that as a an objective time right an objective measure of time Uh so right now we don't have that we don't have an objective we use zulu right we use the uh the meridian that goes through london and and and, uh, and paris Mm -hmm. it's one of the one of what we use now but this is going to be something that's going to be more universal and probably just because of all the technology is some sort of relativistic you know, objective clock, right? Right. These are some some sort of thing that can do that, and, and so there has to be something about when you know exactly what time it is, you know right. something. Right. Right. Um, so that there, I don't know if it's, I don't want to say nefarious, but there definitely, it, there definitely is, it does something with the time that it tells. So there's another another thing. It looks like a portal. It looks like um, you know, contact. Uh huh. A Jodie Foster movie. That's what it looks like. Okay. Some sort of contraption like that, right? Okay. Uh, these ridiculous things. That's my speculation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if she if she has some sort of knowledge and able to control time and everything, it actually brings up a bunch of different questions. How are you able to control your own? <laughs> the tinfoil hat people is back. <laughs> but what if you could be more than one person? <laughs> then you could be in more than one place, and it, you could exist in more than one time. Oh, but if you man. knew the then times wouldn't overlap, then you could loop back in on yourself and be anywhere. So oh, if you knew, man, then, then you'd be like the Flash on the CW show and everything. You know, yeah, about to come out with a great crossover. you were pretty soon, which is 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 pretty decent anyway. Um, um, but yeah, so so it brings up a lot of questions. How her possible manipulation of time. And how she's able to control it, and still, and still have her own fate, you know, and her own destiny. Either the question in her is, hands. what is this thing for? Is it is it so that she yeah. can do those sorts of exacting calculations on asteroids? Because that would be the sort of mechanism that would allow you to do that as well. Right. Um, is it to do something with time travel? Is it something with Doctor Manhattan? A lot of open questions here, and that's the way we like it. The the answer to this is going to be on the final for sure. So there's no need to worry. 
we will be seeing well, this one. Well, well, yeah, like like you said, Doctor Manhattan was able to see time and like um, all at once, right? Mm -hmm. You know, yes, yeah, he, he his experience is simultaneous, right? Some you know simultaneous, and um, um, maybe this is something that um, Lady True is trying to tap into. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and uh, that's definitely. Uh, something I'm thinking may be the case. It's definitely possible in this world and everything. You know, and a lot of technology. Doc, when when the um, when Doctor Manhattan appeared, everything changed. Mm -hmm. You know, so the possibilities based on Doctor Manhattan, you know, in this world are endless. And a lot of technology that came out of the world that didn't happen and that did happen, you know, with um, Manhattan going to Mars and everything, um, is definitely possible in this universe. It could just be magic, right? Because Dr. Manhattan can just say, that's how it is now. Yeah. That's how it is. Uh, there's this great exchange here where um, where Bian gives them the evidence, and then Lady Chu says, there's a saying, and then she says, your grandfather wants to know if you got the pills <laughs> in Vietnamese, which Lori mustn't speak. And then uh, Angela says, uh, tell that old fucker he can ask me himself, which is very funny. That she just is not even not even willing to put on any pretension for anybody, right, even Lady right, Truth. Right. Not nope. Not being nice. And not now I know you're involved in this and wrapped up in this, and it uh -huh, all makes sense. Yeah, and I know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Like now I know we got the goods. Like we have to look here. All right. And she wants right. to solve it. <laughs> uh, and then we see a statue of Adrian Veidt. Truly a great man, although portrayed old. And Lori says he looks like shit. <laughs> Old All friend right. um, Adrian and everything. Old friend Adrian. So the master of the uh, of the estate, the uh, king of the castle, Adrian Veidt. The lord of the is, manor. Lord of the manor. Reduced to fishing in a pond using a, uh, like a crab trap or a lobster trap to trap babies that seem to man. be just clones that are blank. Uh, yeah. They seem to have no purpose but to serve, and, and that's something we see later. But but uh, Adrian pulls a couple clones out of the pond, takes them back to some facility, yeah. and pops them in like a baby microwave. Oh, man. Uh, I said like he's uh, heating up some pizza or spaghetti <laughs> or something. Just waiting around, you know. Just wait, just waiting around and everything. We hear like the screams and all that stuff. He 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 wants the um man. What where the hell is this guy at? Where he's winding up a um. <laughs> Um, um, I, I, uh, old record player and everything to, you know, to play, uh, more or less. British Invasion more... hits. Like, these are all, like, hit, like songs from the 60s, right? Yes, these yes, aren't, like, exactly. Right, right. It's not, like, uh, Victorian old-timey, Right, right, right. Know. When the record player was first invented, you know, back in, like, the, um, uh, and don't, you know, hashtag hate Sam and everything back in the early 1900s. 1903. 1903. <laughs> 1903. Thomas Edison. I, I don't know. Thomas Edison. I was like early 1900s. Okay. I don't know. I All don't right. think that's. I don't. Sam. I don't think that's right. It's just. Damn a, it. it's just a <laughs> <laughs> and that's another lesson in how you can trick people into believing you're smarter than you are. Uh, just say the number. Uh, so. All right. So he grows himself a new Mr. Phillips and a new Mrs. Crookshanks. Right. Says they come to life. They're born here. So birthing and life and beginning. Yep. Obvious. Continue the themes. Therefore, once they're heated up, he takes them out. <laughs> once they're heated up, he gets them all dressed up, and he says, "I'm not. I'm your master, but I'm not your creator. I would never give you life because you don't have a purpose. Your purpose is only to serve me." Right. And then uh, we find that uh, Adrian had a rough night. He murdered what? the staff. The calling what, up staff. What does this remind you of as far as the way they, they pictured, you know, the staff being murdered? What, what is this uh, 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 another event Adrian just had, you know, was involved with? He has no good, like, <laughs> no good words, though, right? Like uh, such a, an in, uh, what's he say? It's uh, such a, an adequate reward. That's what he says when he gives doses his buddies, his creepy triplets. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That and also the fact that, you know, he also leaves bodies just lying all around with the That's whole squid thing and everything, you know. Um, this The whole chaotic nature of all these bodies just, you know, you had a stabbing in the heart and everything and, you know, bodies on top of bodies and stuff and everything. It, it reminded me of the whole New York incident. Mm -hmm. The New York incident or, uh, you know. D.I.E. Well, D.I.E. <laughs> All the allusions also in popular culture. Uh, there are a Rick and Morty episode, as yep. people now as people now know, I'm a fan of Rick and Morty. Too. Uh, that's something people know about me now. It's a bedrock thing. Uh, Look who's purging now. I believe is the, the episode title. 
where they just go into a, a castle and get to doing it. Uh, I think it, this is a bizarre... It, it seems unhinged here, right? Mm-hmm. Right there. He says, I had a, a rough night. And we then see that there, it seems like there's a method to his madness, though. Uh-huh. Because he's launching these bodies using a enormous catapult that he built. And he sees that they disappear. Yeah. Now, there are five settings for him to aim. And he, while he's while he's putting, you know, these old bodies, these bodies in, in launching them, mm-hmm. he says, four years. At the beginning, I thought it was a paradise. It's a prison. Mm-hmm. With your lives, with your broken, mangled bodies, I will escape. Right. Now, interesting thing. I, I, I watched this back because I wanted to get that speech right because it seems so important. Right. And... I believe the the caption said your old bodies. So who knows if that's a line that's hmm. something they rewrote I or what? I don't watch it with the captions. Is that what it said? Yeah, on HBO Go when you back up it does the captions for the oh, backup. Okay. Hmm. That's how I also got the spelling for, you know, BN and blah 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 blah. Okay. That's hmm. a pro trick. Don't steal that. <laughs> Unless you're Sam. Sam obviously has proprietary access to all of my work. I can steal anything I want from him. You absolutely can. Damn. Oh, just stole some of my energy just there. Did you see that? <laughs> well, right at least away. I wasn't flicking babies and fetuses, you know. <laughs> That's right. Ooh. That's right. You're not just throwing fetuses back in a lake. Thank God. Oh, man. Because, again, we are pro baby here at Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen. Yes, we are. All right. So uh, this looking glass, this is another one of those interesting uh, segues where we yep. get the looking glass zoomed in and then the moon. Yep. Which could be an allusion to lunacy, like we said in the in the mm-hmm. quick show. Mm-hmm. Could be an allusion to just he's on the moon. Yeah, he's somewhere far away. Somewhere far away. Mm-hmm. He's isolated and imprisoned. And then uh, Angela and Cal have a conversation. Mm-hmm. Cal says, "I hate lying," but he didn't give up the goods. Mm-hmm. You know that. Uh, he's like, "You didn't tell me you had a grandfather," and it's just kind of funny. We know we find the following thing. So, so they definitely met in Vietnam. That's legit. We find out that Cal had an accident at some point. Right. So that's that's interesting. And Angela says, "I can find the uh, the old man, the old man myself. I don't need help." And then she says, "Meet you in the closet," which is sexy. It's for sex. Right. right. Meeting um, in the closet for sex. Um, Cal is reading a book, right? Yes. Okay. So he is reading a book from um. Um, all right, let me, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm on um, Google right now, basically just, you know, looking at this. It's a not, um, he's reading a book uh, from 1958 novelist, Chinua Achibe, uh, Achibe, I'm just butchering whatever the name of the, um, <laughs> the name of the author is from, from a novel called Things Fall Apart. And in the, um, um, it's, it's alluded to the episode's title. You know, if you don't like my story, write your own. You know, and it's from that novel that he's reading right there. Mm-hmm. So, so that's where is, the, the title's from. That's where the title of the episode is from. Excellent. You know? So, yeah. Little tidbit. Some good work. Some good work. like it. Right. Uh, he also, there's also, I, I think she says the protagonist hangs himself at the end, too. Mm, okay. Which is something that uh, dovetails also with us here. Right. Um, I want to talk just for a second. So, mm-hmm. my suspicion about... One of the one of the places we're going since we now are conf- it's confirmed that Lady True can make a clone, mm-hmm. or at least uh you know due to the engineering necessary to repair the broken pieces of an egg. I uh, I am getting more and more convinced that Lady True is cloning has cloned Angela and has cloned maybe Cal. Oh man, uh, your Tim Foil hat man. Okay, Woo. sorry, sorry guys. What is it? You you're hitting me with something here, man. All right, so so hear me out. Mm-hmm. Angela has already. We don't know what happened to her the night of the White Knight. Right. We do know that she was out of consciousness for three days. Right. And we also know that Cal lived through that attack. Yeah, we don't know where Cal was. If. Let's say mm-hmm. just because again, conspiracy theories are correct in Watchmen. <laughs> Let's say that Lady True has been cloning 
uh, people that have died mm -hmm. for some time. Mm -hmm. And we know that Angela's parents died when she was young and Cal had an accident. Mm -hmm. What if Lady True had resurrected them at that point mm. and had them live their life? Now, let's fast forward to the White Knight. If Angela and Cal were sent to Tulsa, not even I'm not saying they would know this. They were sent to Tulsa to live. Lady True then comes there to live. And then it would seem that Angela and Cal, if they're replaced by clones, are replaced during the White Knight. Now, I'm not a crazy person. <laughs> but if that's the case, mm -hmm. then the entire White Knight could have been just an opportunity to replace these people with clones. Uh, the connection goes further because we know that Judd also was in Vietnam at the same time. He was mm -hmm. fighting for Batlin, Batlin Captain Bobby Muller's right. commandos, right? right? Which is another great name drop from uh, right, right, right. Batlin Bobby Muller. Uh, so I see this whole thing dovetailing into a situation where for some reason mm -hmm. the, they had to replace these people. Again, it's possible, it, and you can do the whole thing without the cloning, right? It could just be a conspiracy well, of these people, well, and they all know about it, right? Okay. Well, what what did we say about um, um, Lady True being sort of analogous to um, to Adrian? You mm -hmm. know, and we know Adrian was a master plotter. He took down to the detail um, of what he needed to do and everything he needed to do in order to pull off the um, the DIE event. You know that eventually eventually capped off the um, the graphic novel and everything. Mm -hmm. The um, what Lady True may possibly do, and based on what you're saying, you know, is using a whole um, White Knight event as like a, a just a cover, you know, mm -hmm. and it ended with you know the 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 not not that event, but um, the first episode ended with a murder, just like how mm -hmm. the comedian died in the first you know um, chapter of Watchmen, um, of the graphic novel and everything, and we know that was caused by Adrian. Mm -hmm. So, if we're trying to find out who murdered Judd, are we I think it's, are, are we saying that Lady True has something to do with it? Based absolutely on, yes. Based absolutely. on based on what we know of Adrian, based on what we know of everything that 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 maybe you know she 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 she's a um, she's a lady Adrian. Mm -hmm. Well, she's Adrian's better. She's. A, a super Adrian, right? She a is super, best at Adrian. Uh, if, if, if you can think about a super Adrian based on what we know about Adrian, and this lady is better than him? Well, I think that she forced him into making some sort of Faustian bargain that let him, like, she was, I will expose the, the DIE, mm -hmm. and you can live a life, you, you'll have servants, and you'll have access to this stuff, and you'll just live a life of luxury, and, and you're okay, and you can go. And he made the deal, and he realized that servants that he was getting weren't real people and there was nobody to talk to and he was alone and he was miserable right right right, right. there's nobody to eventually over time yeah mm -hmm. and and for me and, and uh, you know there's nobody to appreciate the grandeur that is adrian veid right that's the issue <laughs> that's like, the, these people yes. serve him but yes. they can't choose to do so they're made to do right, so and right, that and right, that right. has that just drives him crazy because he yeah. craves that admiration it's yep. the reason he dresses yep. up it's the reason he yep. did all that crime fighting yep, yep. it's yep. the reason he came up with the uh, the Adrian Vite workout, which, Sam, that workout will give you bodies you cannot <laughs> believe. You will not be able to believe the bodies you'll get. It's, the bodies! The bodies, Mr. Phillips, are it's, it's the reason why he, of all people, thought he was the one to save the world, to, to bring everyone together. What... You don't even want to call him a villain in the, in the graphic novel and everything. Yeah. You want to call him... He wants to call himself the hero... Because he was the reason, you know, he had to, to, to do everything he could to, um, to get this event to happen to bring the world so tall together. Never mind what he would, you know, uh, what the consequences would be afterwards, you know, and over time and everything. And we mm -hmm. saw how things develop over time in this particular world and stuff. So unintended consequences, you know, um, um, based on his event. Um, she is a a, a hype a, a trillionaire. When where Adrian was a billionaire, she's a hyper version of that. She's you know, ten trillion. She's like what five five Bezoses, right? 
right now. <laughs> so right, 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 right. And that's right. not even that's. I mean, that, that's not even fictional. That's real. So I guess it's believable. So, so your clone theory, yes, is such a great tinfoil hat theory because it ma- it makes so much sense that since that okay, if you if you want to um use I guess race, you know, it, it's a, a really great way to use a, an event and like the the clan the uh, racism, you know, these Rorschachs, you know, coming out and everything to use that and manipulate time, I guess, and people to have these events, you know, happen on the course of, you know, um uh, um already plotted course to where you can map out everything to your hyper event. You know, mm-hmm. I can't put on my tin for and everything. So that's why you got yours on. But isn't that the same thing that Adrian did in the book? Yes. It's okay. a similar thing for okay. sure. For okay. sure. Because there's something, although, you know, I think, hold on, I'm going to take this off. Okay. The one thing about Adrian that would make him farcical in comparison to Lady True is that what Adrian did was a lie. <laughs> what Adrian did was pretend mm-hmm. that this this DIE mm-hmm. was real and that the squid was real and trick right. humanity into coming together. Right. If Lady True is doing this the right way, then she wouldn't be tricking anybody, right? So her event, if her meaning is to you know, realign us in a certain way, either to her benefit or to our benefit, is going to be a real thing. Right, right. So, 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 we're not privy to what means. Well, not what means, but what her motivations are to do this. Right. That's true. Okay. And I want to, I want to talk more about that. So I don't want you to feel like I'm cutting you off. But we're right oh, at no. the end, and I yeah. think there's info here that also informs that. So I just want to run through the end okay. here real quick. Okay. So uh, BN wakes up, pulls an IV, wakes up again. Birth, awakening, you know, beginnings, mm-hmm. um, and. She goes to see her mother, Lady True. Mm-hmm. She says, I had a nightmare. The village was on fire. Men came and burned it. She says, my feet still hurt. Right. Lady True says, good. Huh. Now, here's my thinking here. Okay. I'm thinking that this is hearkening back to a scene in the Vietnam War. And I'm thinking that the original Lady True experienced that. Now, my real theory, (laughs) if we're going with all the cloning and stuff, is that the Lady True we see is not the original Lady True. Because she talks about her mother. And her mother said, never leave Vietnam. And her mother said all these things. That's exactly how Bien talks to Lady True. Yeah. Lady True is also a title. Mm -hmm. It's not a name. And it would make sense if Bien is the second generation that she would be named with a b hmm. if we find out the lady true's name starts with an a i'm calling it tinfoil or not i'm calling i'm taking the hat off too when i do that and i will also cash in my many internet points <laughs> internet For points fame. gotta For i fame. gotta love those internet points man For fame. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when bn goes to leave she says good night mr reeves will's there mm-hmm. uh, this is unequivocal i mean lady true had judd killed for whatever reason, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how long is it going to take? We have this. this they, Will and Lady True have this ambivalent, com- this weird conversation, this really cryptic conversation. Deals get broken. This is the same thing you drew into your daughter. Letting you figure this out on your own is what Will says you're doing. Will stands up and says, "My feet are just fine." He <laughs> says, "How much longer do we have to wait? Three days. That interval of time that has been referenced before in the show and is also referenced in a certain religions." iconography that if you're not okay christianity i'm sorry guys i, mean, <laughs> I want to be vague there, but three days later uh, christ rose again that's a thing i, I remember from my teachings uh angela's family it's true i betrayed her i'm all the way in right tick tock tick tock tick tock that's what he says so this is more information that, that again that's legit about the cloning thing yeah makes me think that uh you know obviously there's way more way more details to fill in but if let's say you wanted to have the local police in your pocket 100 percent, right mm-hmm. and you could put the person you want 
in charge. And let's say that person is Angela. Mm -hmm. Having the racist police chief die and be outed as a racist would probably be a pretty effective way to get Angela made to be the chief of police next. Right. Okay. If that was your intention, right? Okay. We also know that she's tied in, obviously, with the uh, the survivor community, mm -hmm. the survivors of the uh, the, the descendants or the uh, beneficiaries of the ma of the fund designed to compensate victims of the massacre. Mm -hmm. So, again, subtext wise, that's what I'm feeling. Okay. When he says Angela's family is that there's something going to happen, but it would make sense if they get some of if if I mean if they get some of Will's DNA, they're going to know that Angela's. There's, granddaughter right because they're right, going to be able right. to do all the same stuff yeah. that she did uh -huh. yep. so the nature of this betrayal and family and if it's true she's family right that's what mm -hmm. he said. if it's true she's family uh that the, the nature of that betrayal seems to be you know uh, maybe will will turn himself in who knows what's gonna happen there could be a lot of things that happen right. here but i think that the clone theory because we're seeing clones they're being shown these clones mm -hmm. and Let's let's think for a second about these awakening scenes, right? Mm -hmm. These awakening. So who wakes? Who's born or who's referenced here? And it goes from um, the baby from the beginning. Yep. So the egg cracking, the egg eggs cracking. on the porch, right. the baby, right? Um, Mr. Mr. Phillips and Mrs. Crookshanks are babies, right. and they're brought to life. Brought to life in a pot. Um. We also have Bien True mm -hmm. wakes up, is brought to life. Mm -hmm. And we find everybody cracking eggs. You know, Cal and mm -hmm. Angela are cracking eggs. There's a bunch of eggs left in the montage scene to clean up. Right. What if everybody that we're that's depicted as having that <gasps> awake moment in the whole show is a clone? Oh, my God. So that would mean all those characters plus Angela... Probably plus Cal. Clone report on Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen. That's what you get when you come with us. Oh man, will this be on the final? Huh? Everything's on the final. It's Everything's a little off show. Okay. Yeah, we're five episodes out. This is like the halfway point, so you know yeah. they could introduce a whole new character that could be the key next week, and we'd be none the wiser, right? Yeah, your your the clone thing. That's a that's a good Tim Four Hat theory. You know, um, it's it's very good, very very very. <laughs> very good, very good. The clones! Attack of the clones! No. Don't say that name. No, 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 no. That name, that, those well, words are Well, that's exactly offensive. what Adrian did, you know. Yes. And that, um... <laughs> Attack some clones. At least it seems like this makes sense. Like, I can see at least yeah. a, a logical through line for why he's doing the things he's doing, right? Yeah. Uh, that's not always the case, so, uh... Hey, but uh, that's, uh, that's what Tim Four has are for, and that's what makes this whole show fun is speculating about. This awesome. one lands going to be we're going to be famous. Hey, so you're going to we'll have see. a lot of you're going to have a trillion internet points, man. A trillion points? <laughs> I, can I get one of those troll uh, pencil toppers? You're going to be a trillion king, internet points. King of the internet, there, you know. <laughs> I tell you, uh, you know, just 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 before we go, uh, you know, I want to talk about real quick about something called Jump for George uh, in regards to internet points. So when I was a kid, we did those sales, crappy sales things at right. our school. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, you can jump for We're going to line up dollar bills and you jump and that's as many dollars as you get, right? As far as you can jump. Well, like the littlest kid in the school won, of course, which is like hilarious. Mm -hmm. And he jumped and it was this big thing. They hyped it up and he won like eight bucks. And and I just, I just remember that as a big letdown. Anyway, I don't know why I thought of that. <laughs> People will remember that they were there. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, but that's about that's about the episode, you that's know. A, really that's about the episode and everything. Really so, tense. um, very intense episode. Um, we got um, Ken, we got Ken coming up. You know, yeah. We're, oh, we're... that's right. You know, guys. Usually, <laughs> usually we record the interview and the cast at the same time, but with scheduling things. Listen, the magic of video. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The the magic of putting the editing and stuff together and everything. We got our man Ken coming up. We're about to do this great show called um Car Carbonite um. Bounty BS. Yes. The Ma it's gonna Mandalorian be a show. podcast. It's going to be a show about The Mandalorian. Uh, we're going to talk all about that. It's going to be me and Sam and Ken, you'll see, and our friend Tony. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to get together and discuss that. Uh, you know, times TBA, because we're not sure exactly when everyone's schedule will work out. But uh, real excited to have yeah. Ken on. Ken's been a frequent guest on our show. I believe he had guested on some of our other Star Wars casts. 
Uh, so I hope you enjoy it. It's a real fun combo. Yeah, if you, if you love our format with fists and everything, taking a deep dive, we're gonna you know do a deep dive in that as well. So you know, all you know, you already, it's it's a lot of you that are Star Wars fans. Mm -hmm. We're gonna love you. You're definitely gonna love this. And where can they get that, Sam? Where are they gonna be able to get the new there show? Are also, you gotta gonna you're gonna get that on YouTube. So mm -hmm. make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Nurse right Hypopedia. You know, Google it, and then we're right there and everything. Make sure that you're going right on our, on to our website, and um, everything's right there on NurseHypopedia.com. So without further ado, let's get to our conversation uh, with Ken, who will he, who is watching Watchmen. And the great thing about this conversation is that we're getting a perspective of him coming from uh, a standpoint of not having any knowledge about like the Watchmen, you know, universe and lore and everything. So he's coming up, you know, from a straight casual viewer and he's loving it. So yep. here's our conversation. Check it out. All right, everybody, thanks so much for joining us on this week's special interview. And just like the other weeks, I've got a nice flowery introduction. Um, yeah, that's right. I know people don't expect that out of me because I'm usually such a jerk. So that's what, uh, that's what the yes. big surprise is. Yes. Uh, and so this is somebody, uh, this week's guest is somebody that knows how big of a jerk I can be. And, and that's because, <laughs> and that's because <laughs> it's, uh, it's our friend, friend of the podcast, uh, nerds like a family member, uh, Ken, Ken's going to join us today to talk about, uh, Watchmen and Ken, um, uh, we'd like to give a little bit of CV, a little bit of a resume introduction for everybody. So why don't you tell us a little bit, you know, um, I know you've been with us on um, on some other podcasts from Star Wars before. Um, I know I'm real excited to ha to have you join us for uh, Carbonite Bounty BS a Mandalorian podcast starting Our next new week. podcast, guys. We are oh, pubbing man. it and teasing it right now. That's right. That's right. And so I guess you know what what the our audience has to ask you you know before we get into what's at hand here is is you know what draws you to to the nerd psycho family. You know what 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 would do you want you know, our, our audience to know about you. Well, I enjoy you guys and I'm a self-professed, uh, nerd. <laughs> not as much as you, because you're the, you two are probably the biggest nerds in nerd history, uh, <laughs> because you've do. written the book on <laughs> being a nerd. So basically star Wars is a huge part of my life. Um, comic books, um, acting out in class, not paying attention, doing other things, just being a regular jerk most of my life. <laughs> I blame nerdism on that. So, oh, I was a big D&D &D fan, too, when I was a, a child. So uh, I also enjoy the show Stranger Things. Ah, yeah, excellent. Yeah, All right, a lot of so, D&D in that show. I'm, I'm, everything, I'm everything that you, you, if you're a parent, you don't want your kid to be. <laughs> <laughs> It's in the D and D's in the Star Wars. He sacrifices Woo. goats. Can everybody? Uh, okay, maybe not the last part. That was, uh, that was the third thing's the punchline, right? Maybe sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I sacrifice. <laughs> yes. So we're, we're we're super excited to have you joining us uh, for for the new project, uh, which again is going to be Carbonite Bounty BS Mandalorian podcast. Um, today, though. Today you've joined us on um, the you know the current uh, show du jour. Uh -huh. Which is uh, Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen, which we know obviously because I guess where we're you're catching this interview. Um, and one of the reasons we wanted to have you on here, not just for the self promotion and self serving introduction, but also because you bring a perspective to this that we don't have, and and that's as kind of a newbie. And you're also someone that's that's you know uh, you know I've seen some of your collection. You've actually gifted me some comic books for whatever reason <laughs> before. <laughs> So, so tell me, what are your uh, first line? Like, what are your impressions of you know the show, you know, uh, in the universe of Watchmen? So, as you said, I've not uh, the I've not seen any of the uh, previous literature on this topic. This show, Watchmen, mm -hmm. wasn't sure what it was, so I kind of went into it completely, uh, completely virginistic. Didn't even see the Zack um, Snyder so, movie, huh? Yeah. You didn't even see the Zack so, Snyder movie? No. Ooh. Mm. Nothing. Okay. Zero. So I saw Don John Johnson cast Sheriff somebody. I don't know the name. I thought, okay, cool. 
also Trent Reznor doing the soundtrack. So already I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> okay, so th- these are great things. Uh, so the police in this sort of future world are working to stamp out um, white supremacy. So that's basically where I'm at on this whole thing. And I'm getting that, that, that idea. And they're sort of this uh, cult. Uh, they wear these crazy masks, um, the Rorschach masks. Right. That's pretty cool. Um, I like that all the cars are electric. Mm-hmm. Even the 78 cap truck, battery powered. The guy was monitoring his little battery gauge on the dashboard. Yeah. I thought that was cool. Yeah. So it was just, it, it was very, I mean, the show is dark, really well done. Um, you know, so far I'm, I'm hooked. I'm going to be, I'm going to be in uh, for the rest of the episode. So. so, so what do you think about the, um, the idea of, uh, of vigilantism in, uh, in America? What do you think about what this show, what do you think this show is saying about, um, about superheroes in this world? Or costume adventures. Well, because costume of adventures, the... right? I'm sorry. You know, I, I guess you're right, Sam. We can't call them <laughs> so they don't exactly. They don't exactly have superheroes in this world. You know, uh, we're gonna just start calling them those jerks. <laughs> what do you think about Cam? Hey, what do you think about those jerks? So the police jerks or the other jerks? Well, they're all yeah. pretty much, you know, have some type of way about them. So yes, yeah. let's you know address them. They're all, all jerks. <laughs> <laughs> well, so in a way, both sides. So they have, you have to have a sort of a vigilante way of going after them because they're so, they're so evil and so hidden. Mm. I mean, the police can't just be their, the regular police and take these guys out. They have to be as, as aggressive and as crazy as as them that, I mean, I I think that makes sense. Yeah. 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 How do you, how, how do you feel about, um, seeing like okay so you just saw the first episode right uh you know complete first right. episode does anything confuse you or are you coming at it from a perspective of, i know you, i know you said some of the elements like you know the electric car and like the um the um you know some of the elements within the episode itself but does watchman is very dense if you've never read any of the source material um, a lot of it is real dense and has a lot of stuff that you just keep going back to and getting layers and layers each time that you see it. Coming from a perspective of not knowing anything about the, the history or the source material, how are you finding yourself adjusting to the episode, at least that first episode, and grasping onto the story and the narrative? Well, the, sh- the, the only thing I was a little confused is, so the sheriff, mm-hmm. uh, like whatever his name is, Don, the Don character i guess he's no longer with us he, he it, it i didn't i wasn't really clear as to whether he was good or maybe aligned mm-hmm. with the rorschach gang tiktok tiktok no <laughs> so because he he makes that reference as though he's familiar with it so but everyone all like um all the police and all the the general would think of as the good people were siding with him and respected him but he seemed to be he seemed to be aligned a little bit on the others too is that right is that correct i don't know hey you know you you'll you'll continue to see but if you're very astute i should say this if this were if this were four or five years from now i probably have an answer for you (laughs) but these damon lindelof shows they tend to package up you know what i mean they're well, we're we're all still studying for the final. You know what I mean, Ken? We don't really know. <laughs> we don't really know the answer yet. Um, so yeah. let me let me ask you this: what's what's your favorite thing? Like, if you had to pick one thing about the show to say, this is my favorite thing about the show. What would that be? So far. Mm. Uh, as far as like far what I've seen, best scene so far is with the the, uh, the traffic stop. Okay. The cop pulls that the guy over. Tense. And thinking it's normal, you know, live PD sort of body cam traffic stop. All of a sudden it goes really wrong, <laughs> really sideways. And that, that was, in, that was, in, I liked that whole scene. Uh, plus the guy, the guy survived, the cop survived. Right. So that was, was pretty cool 
So there's, so I don't know if there, I mean, he was uh, armored in some way, but he, he pulled out of it. What was your thought of, what did you think? Did you, was your first instinct when you saw that scene that he'd been killed? Like, were you thinking that guy's dead? Dead, gone, gonzo. I feel like, you know, some of the comments we got on some of our videos, people say, are saying it's probable that they're just robust. It's sort of a sort of sin city. Um, is is that the idea you're getting, or are you thinking there's something more, you know, uh, something else going on there? I was thinking, um, yeah, kind of like Sin City splatter punk, the thing, uh, like kind of superhuman, um, but with a very, hu- like a very human element, though. Too. So they could he could have been armored in some way, or you know, I don't know. I don't know really how I was what I was thinking about it. That was an impactful scene for me. Okay. To see it happen. What did you think about um, when the squid started dropping? Yeah, I'm not. I don't know. I don't know where. I don't know what the hell in there. It's like <laughs> hundred thousand billion squid. It's like, yeah, okay. Get your car. Get in your car. Squid Put the windshield on, and then it'll all be out. <laughs> what's the name? What's the what's the what's the, uh, what's the girl's name? Angela. Angela A. Bar. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, she, yeah. there's something going on with her. She's 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 crazy. She's got yeah. a she's got a past. Uh, she, yeah. She was a she was a cop. Uh, shot at. Maybe she went through the same transformation. Did she get killed and come back, and now she's superhero? <laughs> hey, that's a hey, that's a. Hey. A very, very um good observations there and everything. Um, yeah, like like Scott said, it's Dan the Lind- the Linda Lost World, so there's a lot of stuff to unpack and there's a lot of layers and everything. But um you if you're you, taking notes, Ken, because yeah. I mean you gotta take notes. I had like ten pages of notes for the first <laughs> for this episode, so like it's it's a it's a it's really chock full of goodies. Um what do you make of the master of the estate? Ah yes, mm-hmm. the Lord of the Manor. The uh, Lord of the Manor, Master. Lord of the Manor. Well, so he, the, well, he he's writing the book. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. The Watchman. What was he calling it? The Watchman. The, the, the Watchmaker's son. The Watchmaker's, the watchmaker's son. I'm playing five X. What do you Can't think is about about his demeanor up. and attitude and is his um mannerisms and how he responds to his minions? <laughs> Yeah, Jeremy Irons is amazing. Um, we have yeah. we have professed. Well, I have professed a, a, a certain horniness for Jeremy Irons in this role because <laughs> he, is, he is in fact amazing in this role. So you're not you're not alone. <laughs> you're not alone on that one. <laughs> Was it like a big adjustment yeah. going from your know, everything that you've seen from the you know beginning of the episode to then? Like, what what did you think? What, what did you think of the, um, I guess, the 180 in, in turn in that um, when yeah. they introduced him? It was it was exactly that, Sam. It was exactly that. I wasn't sure. At, at that point, I didn't know because, so, Don Johnson, the sh- sheriff, is he's done. And actually, I thought Jeremy Irons took him out. But no. <laughs> it, was, it was this kid who's now old now, and this kid who in World War II was the son of a soldier, right? Right. That's World War One. World War I. Well, there was Nazis. I thought it was World War II. So it was just Germans. They weren't just Nazis Germans? yet. I mean, the they guy were... could have expressed a natural socialist ideology, but there wasn't really a codified party that was any sort of, you know, player in German politics at that time. Gotcha. From, what I, from what I understand. So he was the son of that soldier and... He came back, killed the sheriff, hung him with mental powers, apparently. <laughs> and, and, and now, Jer- the Jeremy Jeremy Irons, you called him the man, the Lord of the Manor, is now <laughs> yes. what in charge of the the bad guys, right? Or is he like a doctor, um, Professor X type of thing? <laughs> <laughs> I have. I have my theories I about I, I have it. my theories about what's going on there, Ken. But I don't want to I don't want to spoil you here. I know you're an episode behind a little bit here, and so I don't want to I don't want to start giving away the 
the game. But it's um, it's, 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 it's 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 funny to hear his perspective of it. Oh, I mean, absolutely. We we, we, we <laughs> not it's not even so much as we're ahead of you, but we know a lot of the background of you know the source material and everything, and just hearing your perspective yeah. on um coming as as a, a ca- you know casual viewer coming into the universe and everything and what your theories are is re- is really interesting. You know, Absolutely. It, it's a lot of people out there, you know, like you that are trying to figure out this world and going from you have the, the beginning, starting out the beginning with the um, Tulsa uh, riots and everything back in 1921. Yeah. And then you got the cop scene and everything. Then you got squids falling and then you got the Lord <laughs> of the Manor. It's, it's a lot. To, it's a lot, you know. <laughs> it's a tough piece of meat. You know, it's pretty dense. <laughs> Hard to cut. Yeah, so we were just basically try, trying to see how you were adjusting, or you know, it's, it's good to hear that you 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 know you actually really like what you're seeing and everything there, and a positive some of your theories on um, you know everything that's 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 coming down as far as like the show. Um, so I guess with that being said, you know that's is is, is are are you are you you're apt for more episodes? Are you you're, you are you Abs- you're, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Ready to continue on with the journey and everything, right? Yeah. So tell mm-hmm. me, so t- with your background, you're looking at this. Uh, this is the first time that this has been made into a, a series. Yeah. Well, the the background that, that of Here's Watchmen. Oh, <laughs> the background of Watchmen. <laughs> this is really um, this is really a story as you'll as you'll. Um, and they reference a little bit in the episode there, but uh, the original source material took place back in 1985. So this takes place in the same universe as the source material from the comic um, graphic novel um, 30 years later. So basically um, is how the world continued on after the events from the source material, you know, from the graphic novel. So this is how the the world, yeah, yeah, in the eighties. So this is like the after effects of everything. So, um, you know, 2019. This is how this world would be if that had continued on from, uh, like I said, you know, Alan Moore's graphic novel. Some overarching themes. There's some, uh, you know, there's some some um, <clears throat> like symbols that were in that were in the actual source material that mm-hmm. are showing up a little bit mm-hmm. um, here. A lot uh, of some Easter of the, eggs. A lot, of, a lot of Easter eggs. A lot of character overlap. Uh, there's a couple <laughs> things like. Um, you know, there's a little sign in the background. Stuff we covered, actually, if you if you go back to our episode uh, 101, we can talk, you can see all that stuff. So one of, the, one of the reasons we wanted to have Ken on was because, you know, we want to be a, a podcast that discusses things from the perspective of people that have seen the source material. But we want to make the source material accessible for new people, for people that haven't, you know, uh, taken the time because they're busy. And, they, hey, everybody's busy. Um, you know, everybody's busy. Uh, so that, no, no judgment on you here, but read the source material, kids. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or at the very pay. least, watch watch the movie if you haven't. Yeah. But if you're like Ken and the just first three enjoying it, in the movie, then stop, quit, do there not watch go. the end. Just and, just back out because you're gonna get more confused if you do. <laughs> and then if you're like Ken, you know, and just like it for what it is and everything, just yeah. you know, do it like how he's doing it and just enjoy it, you know, scene by scene, and you know. Um, taking what you can from it, and things will actually pan itself, and fi- you know, you'll fi- stuff will be figured out, you know, as you as you as you as you keep going. Some people are still confused, you know, after like three episodes. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah I, I just love the fact. Okay, you know, you got you got um, the episodes rolling along, then all of a sudden, just squids just drop out of the sky. Squids, you know. And um, like I said, getting your perspective of what you're thinking on, just what the hell is just going on in this world? <laughs> like, does it does does it so show? that happens? That happens a lot in in in, in this universe. Oh, squid. sure, yes, just squid <laughs> rain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You've never you've never been caught in a squid rain before. <laughs> I feel like I feel like maybe there's you've got some bucket list items to to add. Well, if you've it's not, a, if you've it's not an X Files thing. X Files had. <laughs> Several, you know, like uh, revelations, like uh, the the it's in the locusts and the the squids falling from the sky. You know, frogs. Yeah, could be yeah, frogs. Yeah, yeah, frogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does the show remind you of anything that you've seen before? Uh, 
a little bit uh, reminds me a little bit of the purge ah, okay okay a little bit has okay. that vibe to it okay. that sort of dark vigilante terrorist mm-hmm. vibe uh, cross that with mystery men ah, right? okay. nice okay nice. so if, if the pur- purge was going the mystery men were tasked to stop the purge mm-hmm. Uh huh. How how ridiculous would that be? <laughs> <laughs> Chuckler and the Boulder and you know the Schwinkter. You know, if they that sounds like a TV show just our... waiting to happen. Yep. Yeah, oh man! Does. If the Mystery Men <laughs> was tasked to stop the purge, oh, that's... I'm going to fart and shake the minigun. <laughs> oh, hilarious! <laughs> Everyone loves Paul Rubens, first of all. Okay. All right, so. So that is uh, that is uh, Ken. Uh, Ken, they're going to find us. Uh, Ken's going to be joining us as our co-host for Carbonite Bounty BS, a Mandalorian podcast. And Ken, you know, thanks again for joining us today. Really appreciate having you on. Friend of the podcast and uh, motorcycle family member. Really appreciate it. All right. Peace. <laughs> 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 Oh, I didn't see you there. Uh, we were just making a totally unrelated joke. Uh, and certainly not related to anything you would be aware of. Uh, so that's our that's our talk with Ken. Uh, you know, thanks so much to Ken for coming on the show. Thank uh, you. Thank you to you, the viewer and listener, who have uh, been so loyal listening to the show. Uh, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe uh, here and also for our podcasts. Um, send us some comments you can drop them on the video you can also send them to us at watching watchmen at nerdcyclopedia.com and again check out our articles check out our webpage www.nerdcyclopedia.com all right all right so with What's that schedule being look said... like this week schedule look like this week so mm-hmm. coming up sunday night 10:05 right here live reaction Live reaction. We've pretty much ironed all the de- all the the wrinkles out on that, so it should be yeah, yeah, yeah. First, live. First, 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 first couple weeks, you know, we were a little bit late on the spot and everything, but we were pretty much there. So right now we are on it. Right at ten oh five, people. Live inside reaction. Baseball, inside baseball, that's all been my fault. So <laughs> I'll talk to it on the show. Uh, can't say I didn't do it, Sam. Uh, all right, so we'll be but we'll be back for you on Sunday night, and uh, you know. Uh, Keep your eyes peeled here. We're gonna have more media, more stuff coming. Uh, I'm working on uh, some stuff for my, uh, you know, my show, which is called uh, Nobody, Nobody Cares. cares. Nobody, What's cares. Uh, <laughs> Nobody, Nobody cares. Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody cares. So uh, check that out. I'm gonna be breaking down uh, the novel Seventies by Neil Stevenson, oh, talking awesome, about that awesome, a little bit awesome, myself. Awesome. So uh, looking forward to check it. Check that. Out. Absolutely. All right. Anything else? Nothing much. See you when we see you. All right, take it away, crazy man. All right.